addiction as compensation for unresolved trauma. If you're a survivor of some sort of trauma or abuse and you're not a serious addict of something, you're special. Because most people form an addiction um, to compensate for painful memories. So let's explore why that happens and let's also explore why it isn't an effective coping mechanism and why it sort of perpetuates itself and builds on itself. This is common sense, you know, really, but it's good to review this kind of thing, and even though it is common sense. Um, if there's something that you experienced, narc-related or otherwise, where somebody's trying to make you feel something really negative, or they they traumatized you, or maybe you did something really that you really regret, that you wish you could forget about, that, that's painful. Um, you're going to seek an outlet, um, some, some sort of outlet to cover up this pain. And, um, let's just say that you're smoke that you're a tobacco smoker. Um, one of the more mild addictions, we're told. Um, every time that you kind of encounter this, this loop, if you think of your memory and your experiences as like a loop of time circle, every time you hit this particular point in the loop, this point here, or this point here, or this point here, in your mind, um, that's related to, to trauma that, you know, is unresolved, um, or shame, humiliation, you know, it's all the same thing. And um, what you'll do is you'll reach for that addiction as a way to distract yourself from it. But it doesn't work because you, you momentarily forget about it. But then, of course, it comes back stronger than before. And you just need even more of this substance to cover it up than you did before. And then, of course, the addiction itself can begin to form its own set of traumatic or shameful memories, which then compound with the existing ones and create this, you know, continued cycle of traumatic experiences that that require something um, soothing or release, chemical release, to erase them from your uh, experience or memory. Um, so the important thing to know is that just that this, not, not to shame you if you have an addiction, um, or tell you that you shouldn't be addicted to it or what it shouldn't be doing it, but just to know that this isn't a method or a coping mechanism that actually works in the long term. It just compounds the problem. So just kind of like understanding that intellectually, you know, it's not like, okay, I understand that intellectually. Okay, now I'm not going to be addicted to this thing, right? Because you could still be addicted and addictions are a little bit trickier than just saying, oh, well, you know, intellectualizing in a way, right? But just kind of knowing this in your mind, like accepting the logic of the fact that, you know, this addiction is something that you're using to cover up pain and 
it doesn't work to resolve it. It just kind of masks it for a minute and then it makes it worse. So just kind of knowing that the addiction is making um, your pain worse, not more. I mean, more, not less. Just kind of knowing that and knowing the logic of that intellectually, I think, is important. Um, confronting your trauma is the only way, and resolving it is the only way to get through this barrier that's preventing you from uh, living without the addiction. But there's so much trauma, and it can be so difficult and hard to resolve. Um, that it's just it's easier said than done. So you know you turn to the addiction, and it's understandable. And you should have compassion for yourself, and knowing that this is something that you do to try to heal yourself and to try to feel better from things that are really seriously painful in your past. Um, and that as you continue to progress and continue the addiction that you're creating more and more traumatic experiences and experiences of shame that you have to then mask with more of the addiction um, and the cyclical nature of that and just kind of seeing that so the mind, I mean itself the mind has been portrayed as a snake that's eating itself because it sort of just goes around and around in a circle and there's no way you, you can't grab hold of it and you'll keep hearing these honks those are like the trigger points that trigger the addiction right it's like uh honk honk I guess I need to smoke honk I guess I need to use drugs honk I guess I gotta watch pornography uh whatever um, and, you know, like I said, um, there's no reason to shame yourself about what you're doing. That's not the point. Um, the point is just acknowledging the fact that it's not an, it's not an adequate coping mechanism and it's just making things worse for you. Um... Yeah, so I mean, I did create this meditation um, called the Burning Bush Meditation, which is in my videos, video library on my channel, and uh, it's pretty good actually at, at uh, helping you with some of this, and what you'll notice here after you do it once or twice is that... Um, if you're a narc survivor, <laughs> this is far out. Um, a lot of times people that are, are victims of narcs become ashamed of being good at stuff. <laughs> How sick is that? I mean, so they start to feel guilty about the fact that they're good at something and they sort of feel embarrassed by it. Um... And this becomes its own obstacle. So what you'll notice um, if you're a narc survivor doing that meditation, the burning bush meditation, is that if you do it a couple times, it'll go from your anger and your resentment towards the narc or towards negative memories. And you'll start to erase a lot of that stuff. And it'll go back to that more primordial state that you were in before you adopted a self-defeating mentality to make other people feel better <laughs> and it'll go back to remind it'll go back to that state where you were like um, feeling guilty about being successful or feeling guilty about doing something right but anyway you know just keep going keep doing the meditation and uh, go through all that stuff you know you got to deal with the fear of failure and you have to deal with the fear of success both you know so keep going through the meditation and, and just clear all that stuff out. And then you clock out. And this is a lot about, you know, getting rid of your relation, your uh, dependence on the concept of um, concepts and ideas. I am an addict. I am not an addict. Um, 
and kind of going back to that state of pure being that you're in as a child where it's like you don't just keep looping around and keep going over the same stuff but you're getting new experiences and um, part of the uh, beauty of that meditation I created is the whole idea is you're erasing all the negative stuff think of it like think of it like uh, you know your phone you have to get rid of stuff you have to make space on the memory card so you get rid of a bunch of videos and pictures and images or you put them on a cloud or whatever um, to make space for new ones you know it's the same thing for us as humans um, We have to clear out the negative stuff to make room, you know, for the new stuff. Get rid of the past, and all of a sudden, you know, you're focused on the future. And it's really cool, um, because then you start to say, wow, you know, look at the future and all the potential there. And for some reason, narcs have this obsession with reminding you of the past and, like, keeping you stuck in the past. It's one of the most annoying things, aspects of what they do. But anyway, so, doing this meditation regularly you'll begin to clear out the negative stuff from the past and um, it's like making room for the future and all of a sudden the future opens up and all of a sudden you got to worry about the fear of success instead of the fear of failure which I mean is a much better thing to, to have to think about and worry about in a lot of ways so thanks for watching this video Go check out the, the, the guided meditation I made called The Burning Bush in my video library. And um, just review this concept, you know, in your mind of uh, the, the logic of everything I just explained about addiction. And just remind yourself that, um, that your addictive patterns are uh, aggravating and uh, making your pain be more and not less just always remind yourself of that even if you're still in the midst of the addiction um, just continue to remind yourself of the logic of, of that whole explanation and hopefully that will help you overall in the long term to come up with a different idea about time, trauma and addiction and that will be the name of this video <laughs>